Good morning, West USA. Welcome to our post Super Bowl edition of the West USA weekly webinar. I am your host, Mike Weinstein, here with the whole gang, including uh, Todd Menard. Uh, speaking of uh, post Super Bowl, I know. so I, uh, I pretty much downed about a pound of uh, barbecue meatballs in the crock pot. And uh, they were absolutely delicious. And then, you know, of course, we threw everything in the trash can, all the leftovers. And then yesterday, I went to throw away the trash and open up the lid. And the smell of barbecue sauce still imminent. I don't know if that's weird or not, but I got, I got hungry all, all, all over again, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, but, Patriots won, you know, okay, my home team. Let's not going to talk about that. Uh, anyway, so as always, uh, we're here to uh, help you increase your bottom line as we increase our bottom end and. As usual, if you got any questions, would like copies of the slides, please feel free to email us at webinar at westusa.com. So let's just jump in and see what we've got on the docket today. Of course, our operations officer, Todd Menard, is here to give us a look at the mortgage numbers. We've got uh, Mick Menard from the Bookspan Baker team here to give us a little uh, mortgage minute. I'm going to give you a little three pack on uh, tips to improving your business and life. Uh, you could take these tips and, and apply them personally, but more importantly, apply them to your business. Then we got Lauren Rose. In here. She is one of our top producers out of the Kierlin office. She's going to give you her five uh, secrets to success as well as talk about her team. She has got a phenomenal uh, team going on, looking to grow that team and uh, and generating leads like I'm eating meatballs. Uh, and uh, of course, don't do that with Bob. So uh, let's move right along. Todd is looking fit and trim. The the Patriots win and he oh, breaks boy. out a brand new slide. Look yeah, at that. I, actually, they're uh, the the parade is going on in boston right now i'm missing it but that's not as important as being here yeah brady tom brady's actually not at the parade he's still looking for his jersey yeah well it's actually he, i just saw him in the parade picture oh, okay. so he's there <laughs> all right so uh moving so right go along what's going on in the real estate Alrighty, market that's thanks, all we everybody. really care about exactly 78 days on markets where we closed out a month supply sitting at 5.15 we haven't been over five in a while absorption rate sitting at 19.42 Average list price is soaring up to 512877 and the average sale price is having a difficult uh, beginning of the year 276046 sale price not the original list price but the list price to sale price retention is at 97.29 sellers aren't really giving up too mo too much right now uh, that's really what that means taking a look at inventory levels dropped just a little bit to 20 just over 20,000 uh, we have pending units <laughs> finally back into the fives we're hoping to get them into the sixes and sevens in the next month or two uh, but sitting at 5210 uh, closed units well we really don't need to talk about that's too early in the month we're sitting at 657 so taking a look at the sticky slide sooner or later we'll go to the next page here we go uh, taking a look at uh, new taking a look at the <laughs> Which one do you want? Pick a, <laughs> pick a slide. <laughs> well, this is a blooper reel for sure. Uh, taking a look at new listings. We did take 2,263 listings. That was up th almost 300 listings. Uh, but as you'll see, uh, the pending units went up also 300 units. So it wiped out the inventory, which is why we're a little lower than we were uh, last week. But the uh, average days on market is about 128.8. That's down three points. Uh, we're sitting at closed days on market at 78. All right, now we go off. Here we go. Uh, this is where we're going to take a little closer comparison. We just got two two quick slides on the left today, and then we'll go down the month of January because it is month end. Uh, taking a look at the, over the last week, we noticed that we were at 2179, now 2263. Uh, our pending units went up to 5210, which pretty much absorbed all of that and more, which is why we dropped from 20,339 down to 20,300. Taking a look at the statistics, yeah, five sounds really high, five months supply, but remember four to six is good. Can, can we say that with the uh, George Bush effect? You know, the it's good, but it's 5.15. Uh, last week was 3.93. Michael, take care of the jokes from here on out. 19.42 <laughs> is the absorption rate. Uh, 25 last week was rather strong, but that's coming off of January. January, I hope all of you that are out there in the listening world had a phenomenal January because January was uh, was up significantly over last year. Uh, and again, since uh, December, the the holiday months. Uh, we're having a little bit of a price with our list price. Look at that. Went from 505 five to, to, to 512. Uh, ended the month about 509. Ended December at 500. So it's taken a significant jump. Uh, average sale price is 276.046. So that usually lags about 30 days. So let's see where that is 30 days from today. 
Okay, so here, here's really what we do. We just got a couple of things here going down the month of January, uh, which is closed out with 10,000 uh, properties added to the uh, to, to the MLS. But if you uh, take a look at the pending, pending again uh, was up 5567. So versus December at 3949, that was a healthy increase up 41 percent uh, month over month. Uh, taking a look at the uh, closed inventory, you know, again, six thousand for the close of last month. It was seventy one hundred in the in in December. Everybody's got to realize you had a great December because that was amazing. Look at that; it was a thousand over the year before. Uh, but you know, we're still sitting with about a fifteen percent uh, reduction from last uh, from the month of December. Uh, finally, closing out down at the bottom, we have uh, we averaged three point eight eight. Uh, average month supply. So again, just under four should be a seller's market. Is it a seller's market? I don't know. I think I think the buyers out there right now are still having a lot of negotiating power still because there's really quite frankly, not a lot on the market, but enough that someone can find what they want. So the sellers really can't demand that high price at this point. Uh, and that and that basically is the reason why these numbers are falling in where they're at, where they're at at this particular moment. Might not feel that way. You know, when you go to write an offer with your buyer, you might feel like there's limited inventory. You might feel like the sellers are asking a little bit more, but they're not. These are the statistics. If you feel that way, you need to change the way you feel because this is exactly what's happening in the marketplace. I know I've talked to a lot of realtors over the last week and, and and, and most of them are telling me, gee, you know, we got limited inventory again. We have, uh, you know, people that want to buy houses and not enough houses. We're just not seeing that on the statistics. So uh, that could show up next month, but we'll see. So I don't really need to talk about the, the bottom uh, slide right here. We did talk about days on market. Biggest thing you have to know here is uh, the market is still averaging about 78 days on market. So, Mike, that's the numbers. All right. Appreciate it, Todd. And as always, uh, you'll be able to find copies of the slides, especially to use for marketing purposes on the dashboard uh, later on this afternoon. Perfect. All right. So let's move right along. Let's just see what the mortgage market looks like. And we've got Mick Bernard here from the Bookspan Baker team at Home Street Home Loans. Welcome, Mick. And Thank uh, you so what's much. going on? Yeah, rates are pretty flat. You know, they've been kind of going sideways for the last few weeks, maybe up an eighth, down an eighth. But, um, you know, since the election and uh, the Fed speak, you know, as they went up about a half a percent. Now they're kind of just hanging in there, really. Uh, keep in mind, these rates that we're quoting don't have any points. So if you want to pay a you know, discount point or points your for your clients, then you're fortunately going to get those rates down to the low fours or maybe still back into the threes. Uh, and of course, 15 year terms are, are lower as well. We don't do a lot of those, but those definitely are available rates. No question question about that. So this week, we're going to talk about some closing costs. We haven't really touched based on this. We talk about down payment assistance a lot. And for those of you that have done a down payment assistance program for one of your clients, you know, it's down payment assistance. Most of the down payment assistance programs don't cover closing costs. And so you're it's left to you to negotiate closing costs to be paid for by the seller uh, if you're able to do that. But in some cases, you're not able to. And so we want to go over the three different ways that you can pay pay the closing costs. And so, um, you know, if we go to the next slide, you'll see that basically, um, you know, there's three ways to do that. Buyer can pay them, uh, seller can pay them. And what can surprise some of you, maybe the, the lender can pay them. And so for those of you that weren't aware of this, that we do what we call the yield spread. And when you talk about points, paying a point, have your client pay some fees to buy a rate lower. If they're willing to pay a higher rate, then we pay your buyer points, basically. And those points that we pay can be used to cover closing costs. And uh, what I find is that many, many agents aren't aware of that option, but it is an, op an option for most programs. Um, and so if your client isn't going to do a down payment assistance program because it's not available for down payment assistance programs, those rates are always, as you know, a little bit higher than what the standard rates are. But you can definitely have us help out with that if you're just in a standard purchase, VA, FHA, conventional. It pretty much works on all programs. So w would this be something that not all lenders would offer as an option? And, and if not, um, this might be one of my first questions I might ask my lender. Well, I would ask your lender. I would definitely ask. I would say that most lenders would offer this. Um, and so you, you just really need to ask the question, you know, and especially when you get into a scenario where you know, if it's a hundred thousand dollar purchase, as we know, those are tougher because you're, you're, if you're paying a point, you're not, you're not buying it that much. Now, if you ask, or say, so if you're asking for seller concessions, you know, 2% of a hundred thousand isn't going to get your closing costs done. Same thing with a, what we call a yield spread premium for your buyer, you know, t on a smaller loan, it's a little harder to get, 
did you get enough money out of it to get that get that cover? But it could be a combination, right? A smaller loan amount. Maybe your seller is willing to pay their two and a half, two to two and a half percent. You get you get a little bit of money, and then we're able to to uh, charge a slightly higher interest rate and finish off the closing costs. Uh, but just keep in mind, it's not available for a down payment assistance program. All right, and then if need be, Mick Bernard will go down to the ATM, pull out some cash, and help <laughs> your buyers. That is the Bookspan Baker team difference. Damn. Um, you like that segue right there? I would Mel? say co- corporate would like to would like me to say at this point in time that would be against rest or that would be a RESPA <laughs> violation. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't have any Reg Z disclosure at the bottom. So here, so. so we'll just we'll just leave it at that. And again, the, the book Bookspan Baker difference. Uh, keep in mind, you know, we we subscribe to a system called an established. Most of you out there that have used this love that program. We simply issue an electronic pre qualification for a maximum pre qual, and then you're able to change that number to match your offer at any time, anywhere. So if you're negotiating on a Sunday night and uh, you've got a prequal for 300,000 and all of a sudden you need one for 305, you can just go back into the system. And as long as your client is approved for that amount, uh, you can change that number to 305. You don't have to track us down for a second or a third, or in some cases a fourth or fifth uh, <laughs> prequalification form. You can actually just print them up yourself. All right. And uh, I would also say one of the, the things, you know, uh, we could spend all we could spend an entire hour with you talking about all the different uh, options there are for our buyers out there, and that's one of the huge benefits of having the Booksman Baker team in our offices and their knowledge. Um, just you know, I mean, you got to sit down and talk with somebody who knows what they're doing and what they're talking about, and understand all the available options. Because when you understand the available options, then it really increases your marketing efforts. So gives you more confidence. All right. Appreciate it, Mick, Thank as you. always. All right. So moving right along to the three pack. So um, improving your business and your life. So I'm going to just give everybody a three simple tips uh, and, and things to really think about, things that I've learned from from the many business owners, entrepreneurs, and top agents that I come across. And, and sometimes, and I always find, Todd, that success is no, it, it's not so much about the leads as much as just the mindset and how you approach your business and 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 how you deal with yourself emotionally uh, approaching your business. So, tip number one, um, this is a huge one because I uh, I find this a lot. But we as agents should avoid should avoid those who aren't helping our business. If 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 you're spending a lot of time with people who aren't helping you grow your business, uh, you're probably doing it wrong. Um, stay away from negative people. And the reason that I say this is because I'm out in the offices that I work with agents from other brokerages and, and, and so forth. And, and sometimes we can be a negative lot. And when we hang out with each other, we hang out with negative people. All of a sudden, we've got negative attitudes about the business, the industry, maybe our own brokerage. Stay away from those who are never happy. Yeah. Okay. You got people just never happy. I can't ever. There are certain people in my life that, that I, you just can't ever make happy and you know who you are (laughs) and you know who they are. Um, And if you're sitting there right now getting really angry at me right now, you might be one of them. Uh, (laughs) Don't spend all your time with underperforming agents uh, and find those who you want to emulate. Uh, you want to find the successful agents. Uh, I find that that we in the offices, we hang out in packs and there'll be the pack of agents. They're all underperforming agents. And we spend all of our time getting ideas from underperforming agents. And it doesn't necessarily help us. I once came across a, a, an agent out of the East Valley. She was brand new to real estate. And we started talking about her lender. And she says, yeah, her good friend just became a lender. And that's her lender. I'm like, so now we have two of you that don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. You know, this is adopting a behavior is really what it is. And, you know, it, it's it's like anything else. If you were, if if you go through 66 days, which is what it takes to form a habit, good or bad, and you emulate those behavioral ad- aspects that, that are those of an underproducer, guess who you're going to become? You're going to become an underproducer. And it's not because you willfully want to do that. It's because you're subliminally being directed to do that with your subconscious. So this is why people talk about vision boards. This is why people talk about you know uh, positive affirmations and things of that nature. Stay positive and surround yourself with the kind of people you'd like to become. All right, number two, get started on something. Okay, so we spent so much time talking about 2017 goals, putting together our business plans, and there are many of us that are still stuck in the mud and haven't done anything with those goals, okay? Uh, It's one thing to talk about it, but at some point, we've got to get started. So look back on your 2017 goals. Have you started to implement any of them? Because at some point, you have to start trying things. And, And I find that one of the biggest reasons 
that holds us back from trying new things is that fear of failure. Um, I will guarantee you, you will fail at things. I, I look back on my career and all the different things that, that I have I have attempted to do in, in my career. My life is littered with failures, more failures than, than successes. But uh, at the very least, if there's anything that could be said about me besides the fact that I eat a lot <laughs> is I've, I've never allowed the, the, the fear of failure to keep me from trying things. And really, th- we have some great ideas. You've been seeing what some of these other agents are doing um, and something is holding you back from trying something. So my my advice is just start. Get off the starting line. Get off the bench and, and put something to action. Well, exactly. You know, a, a long time ago, I heard of this uh, acronym FEAR, and it was called False Evidence Appearing Real. And and when we get, when we, we become uh, threatened or uh, intimidated or we believe, we, we create our own obstacles. And and so what, what you really want to do is you want to find out the kind of behavioral assessment that you have. You know, are you the kind of person that likes business to come to you or are you the kind of person that wants to go get it because you're just so into the statistics and the numbers you want to, you want to beat that other agent. You want to produce more than that other agent. Uh, because if you don't have that, then you need an activity that will put you in and make you a contender. So when you're doing that, what will you have to wake up every morning? What will Will I do today? Um, you know, anybody can stand over you like a like a boss and tell you what to do, and you'll do it because that's the job description. But the moment the boss isn't paying attention, do you continue doing it? And when you're the an mo- agent, you don't have a boss. Yeah, right. So when your coach is gone, when you when you spent the money for a good coach or or, or uh, one of your fellow agents is willing to to help you, um, when they're not paying attention anymore, do you go back to your old activities or do you stay with your new activities? That's really fail a lot. That's my goal. Fail a, fail lot, a lot and fail fast so that you can get to those things that you have determined work for you. And and maybe some of this is just picking up the phone and start prospecting. And I uh, my 11 year old two weeks ago, um, he he's at the point in his life and he asked a girl to the Valentine's Day dance. So this was this was a big deal in, in our house. And so we were I was replaying, you know, the first time I ever asked a girl out. We were going through all this and trying to overcome fear. And it was it was his first lesson with his dad. And it's something I tell all agents. The worst that anyone can ever say to you is no. Yeah. Okay, so you say no. Yeah. So you don't deserve it. Didn't hurt you. Yeah, so you, so you move on to the next no and you move on to the next failure. Uh, you know, failure is 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 not permanent. It's it's just part of the learning curve and every every top producing agent that I know uh, has probably will tell you they have failed more times than they've succeeded until they have found those things that work for them. And then the third thing is uh, get organized. And now I'm just going to uh, everybody can just turn off their computers because now I'm just going to talk to myself because this is this <laughs> is my Achilles heel. Uh, organization is is everything. Good ideas are never in short supply. I mean, I could I could spend an hour and give you so many great ideas to help you improve your business. However, though, if you are not organized, you will have a hard time implementing these good ideas uh, properly. Or if you're able to implement a few of them, you won't be able to implement as many as you need. So organization is key. And I would just say to all agents, I would start with this. Master your CRM. Mm-hmm. OK, the, your CRM is the lifeblood of your business. Um, I've I've had the privilege in the last three months to work with a few agents that are brand new to real estate, just got their licenses, they're ready to go. And I'm now telling them, I do not want you doing open houses. I don't want you marketing yourself on Facebook. I I don't want you to do anything until you can teach me how to use your CRM. Because once you've mastered your CRM and you know how to organize your CRM, uh, then all of a sudden you can handle a flood of leads. What happens to us, we get so many leads, so many contacts, and then we're always trying to play catch up. A, B, C, D. And and then the the other one is know your systems. I like to say what happens when. Or I I like to use the the term protocol. So I go out, I take a listing, uh, the seller signs the listing agreement. So what happens? What system? is engaged. Uh, When do I schedule the open houses? How many and when do my postcards go out? Do I canvas the neighborhood? What what are the things that, that, that always will happen every time I take a listing? And then when I sell the house, 
what happens? What protocol, what system is engaged? Do I send follow-up postcards? Do I then, do I walk the, and canvas the neighborhood handing out just sold flyers? Whatever the systems are for, for every potential scenario, you need to have a system. I meet eight people at an open house. What happens? Well, immediately I put them into my CRM. Okay, what system now in place? How frequently do I, do I communicate with them? What do I communicate with them? What happens when I sell a house? Okay, we just now closed on this house. What happens over the next 12 months? What system is engaged? How frequently do I follow up? When I follow up, what do I follow up with them about? What do I do about the, the, the person on the other side of the contract? Because guess what? Agency, Agency is, is over. over and chances are that other agent is going to forget about them. Yeah, and, t- and, and statistics for NAR still show that the average agent, 26% of the uh, of the agents that are out there actually retain and, and communicate with their agents. So it's, you sit back and you, uh, with their clients and you sit back and you go, why? You know, the most expensive thing in your real estate career is going to be obtaining a client. Once you've at- obtained them and you have them and you're communicating with them regularly about anything, I don't care if it's hiking or, or whatever their favorite activity is, the point is – you have to maintain that communication. Think about it. Mary Kay, Amway, Network Marketing, all these companies came out and they took the person who's not the salesperson and some of them got it and they became phenomenal at sharing what they do and explaining the benefit or the people that they've helped and explaining that benefit to someone else who has a similar need. So stop, you know, the, the top producers have a horrible time. A high driver has a horrible time with shiny objects. Every time there's a new shiny object, there's a new way to make money. They want to add it to their arsenal uh, because they're, they're all about, you know, big thinking big. But here's the mistake. Here's the mistake people do, Mike. And this is how I'll, I'll close is don't confuse being busy with progress. Now, every every top producer I know has got their systems in place. That's that's the one common have denominator. And speaking place. of the shiny objects, I just got a text message from Capriotis. They're going to offer me free drink and chips if I buy a 12-inch sandwich. So uh, I know where I'm going to be for lunch today. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so speaking of top producers and mindset and, and the way that people approach their business, I want to invite you to a very special event that's going to be taking place at Sevrar on March 1st. This is our first of a of a a long series of what we're calling six figure mind shift power lunches, where it's going to be over lunch, where we're bringing in agents that are top producers as well as top entrepreneurs out there in the business community. So we want to invite you to join us on March 1st again at Sevrar. Uh, Jason here is going to send you a link to this. Um, we are actually, um, we're people are signing up left and right. So we want to get in early to reserve your spot because we are capping it at 100 people. Uh, and if you're, uh, if you're a team leader out there, I'd encourage you, this would be a great thing to bring your entire team to because uh, they're going to, they're going to, get a whole different perspective um, on on how to approach your business. Also, um, hey, speaking of just shiny object, there's going to be a big <laughs> giant boat carrying my fat butt on the open seas on September 30th. If you're going to need to get your CE hours over the next two years, uh, I would say after the middle of November or middle of October, I encourage you to sign up because this is selling out as well. Uh, seven day cruise for credits with West USA. Um, so we're going to spend seven days out on the Pacific Ocean, hitting some spots in Mexico and the days at sea, you will have the opportunity to attend CE classes. And literally by the time you're done with the cruise, you'll be up eight to 10 pounds. Yeah. Uh, if you hang out with me up to 12 to 15 pounds, but you'll walk away with all your CE classes Mike, done for you. That's a system in itself. Yes. Because you're going to get to take a vacation and get your CE hours done at the same time on the same trip. I mean, to me, that sounds like, you know, a top producer needs to be on that. Fact. And and people are asking, can I bring my families? Can I bring my oh, yeah. kids? I don't know why you would want to, but yes, you can. Do they have to go to CE classes? They do not have oh, to go so to CE classes. so they can go on this. They can just go on the cruise, yeah. Oh, my exactly. Gosh. There you out. go. Don't yeah. be forced after yeah. one. I'm 50-50 on whether I'm yeah. going to be uh, taking my yeah. CE classes. And, of course, it's only 765 And 765 per person. Uh, we got well, This was one of your last chances. Uh, the new contract is rolled out. Uh, you may be looking at it going, okay, what just happened? I, I knew, I thought there was a section in there that said seller warranties. They have disappeared. What so, do you mean there's a new contract? So we got another opportunity, February 10th. Uh, we're going to send you a link to get signed up for this as well. Um, to uh, And speaking of CE hours, get your CE hours here. If you take this one, then there's three CE hours you won't have to take on the cruise, and you can just we can just hang out together. Um, but you need to you need to you need to take a class on the new purchase contract. Um, and I always tell people, 
you don't need to take it for you. You need to take it for your clients because you, you've got their financial future in your hands. And then lastly, um, check your, yeah, check your, check your emails. If you haven't taken the West USA's annual survey, we encourage you to do so. Uh, we are giving away $450 in gas cards. Every I keep getting the email. So I know we're sending them out left and right. So uh, this is your opportunity to let us know how we're doing. Um, we're always striving uh, to be better and to provide you with the very best in tools, technology, support, and services. So this is uh, your opportunity. And if to you deleted know. it by mistake, just call in and ask for another link. Absolutely. All right. Pretty excited. Um, this is my favorite part of our webinars uh, where we have our top producer spotlight. Uh, love to hang out and spend time with top producers and kind of get their perspective on how to approach their business. And so we are with Lauren Rosen, who's got a pretty much a valley-wide team, um, but she offices out of the Kirlin. And we're going to talk about her team in a few minutes, but I always ask our top producers uh, for five tips, five secrets uh, to their success. And I've got to tell you, Lauren, um, you lost me at number one. <laughs> I, I could hear that. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you lost me. I did not eat a whole pot of meatballs <laughs> on the Super Bowl. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, so I, I like this because um, in uh, on my radio show, I talk with a lot of entrepreneurs and, and a lot of them, um, I mean, everything generally starts family first and, and God first for those that are, are spiritual, but then it just goes into personal health. If you're not healthy... Yeah. Um, it is really hard to be effective. And if you're successful and not very healthy, then you can only imagine on how much success you're leaving on the table, no pun intended. So part of uh, your deal is you work out every day. Uh, it helps you with your stress level and clears your head. And I love this. You go, I go every morning, turn off my phone. Oh my gosh. You just told people to turn off their cell phones. Is For one that hour <laughs> at 6 to 8 a.m. <laughs> but my meeting with myself. So take us through this, how you started it, and what goes on in this meeting. Um, I've always been a really big believer in balance. And, you know, I am a workaholic, so I have to give my, I have to schedule my workouts so that I have that time with myself. I also believe in eating well, keeping my mind clear. I notice the mornings I don't work out, I'm more stressed out, I'm more reactive instead of just, okay, let me find a solution to this problem. So I just really believe in taking care of your mind and your body to be successful. Uh, you know, and, and what's, you know, one of the, I don't know whether you follow football or even watch the Super Bowl because we know you didn't. I you bleed know. blue. I'm a solid Giants fan. Okay. Thank you very much. And, and, but, and we, we established. <laughs> Still the, the only, you know, quarterback to beat Brady in the Super Bowl. Thank fact, you. Fact, yes. Fact, Fact. But you know one of the one of the one of the major storylines for him. Obviously, he's thirty nine years old, but I mean, just his workout regimen and his eating regimen. I mean, just I mean, and it didn't ma doesn't matter what time of year it was. It was that important to him, and and we saw obviously the impact of it. How long have you been doing it, and and how do you just you know you wake up some days going, oh golly, I don't really feel like doing this today. The problem is when I wake up and I feel like I don't want to do it that day, later in the day, I'm regretting it. So I know later in the day, I'm going to suffer. You know, that extra hour of sleep, great, but not really because now I'm, I'm dragging myself out of bed. I got to do like a million phone calls. I haven't had my meeting with myself yet, you know, to calm my mind. Wow. That's, you know, I lost my train of thought. Mike. Sorry. I had yeah, it because you didn't work out this morning. I didn't work out this yeah, morning. No, actually it. I did, but. <laughs> didn't work. No. I just believe in health. No. I mean, I yeah. started in my mid twenties. I go every single morning for years and you know, I just think that's super important. I also eat super clean. I don't do a lot of junk food and I just, you know, I'm very aware of what I'm doing. I feel like my body is my temple. So if I treat my temple right, then I'll be successful in every other field of my life. There was, there was a person that I coached once and, and we were talking about the why, why you do things. Why do you get up in the morning? Why do you go to work out? And, and we tried to define what why meant. And she said, she said, it's what you do when you don't want to do it, when you know you have to. And I mean, the English wasn't necessarily good, but the, but the definition of it, I mean, that was, that was phenomenal because that's what it is. When you wake up and you don't want to do it, but you know you have to do it, it's what gets you out of bed and makes you go do it. Yeah, and I, and I like the, the also, you know, clearing your head because I think that's where a lot of us, Lauren, as agents, obviously we, we work in an industry that's very busy. Uh, very stressful. There's always a lot going on. 
And when you don't have the that time to mentally prepare yourself for the day, it's very easy to get lost in the day, get unorganized, and let things slip through the, the cracks. But now you have an opportunity to, to mentally and emotionally plan for each and every day. No, it's wonderful. And I actually, I started my team back in August and every single one of them also was working out every single day. And I'm already seeing them. They're each closing two, three deals a month and they're brand new agents with a little bit of my guidance and then them taking control of their mind and their body and just, you know, doing, making themselves the best they could be and create balance in their life. Because the problem with working, I'm guilty. I mean, there's days I'll work 18 hours, but I have that hour, hour and a half to myself every morning. And that like, that keeps me sane. All right. So number two, I, uh, I, um, yeah, the other one kind of offended me a little bit, uh, (laughs) offended my senses, but maybe I need to work on it. But I love number two. Uh, You make it a point to stay up to date on market trends and new mortgage and grant programs, always learning and asking questions. What a phenomenal foundational piece of the pie. Yeah, it's great. I really think if you understand financing and the loan side, then you would actually be a better closer because you can look at a problem and go, here's the solution. Or, oh, this is not working with this lender. This lender has this special product. Let's move it over there. So what I've been doing with my team at our weekly meetings is every week we learn a new loan product. And sometimes we have a lender come in and teach us or sometimes I just educate them. But I've always, always believed you've got to continuously learn. The second you think you know everything, you're an idiot. (laughs) <laughs> well, <laughs> definition of a professional, right? You know what you know, you know what you don't know, and you don't confuse the two. No, yeah. <laughs> no need for calling me names, Lauren. Uh, you know, the, the other thing, too, with understanding, and then I also want to kind of get into what are the other things you're committed to learning and asking questions. But when, when you are a, and I want to say the word master, um, because I let my loan officer be the master, but when I have a very solid grasp of the lending process, of all the different loan programs out there, uh, I don't get paralyzed when situations pop up. You know, every buyer is unique in in, in their their own way. They they have their own issues. There's always things that pop up. Um, But how much of an advantage do you have over the average agent when you sit across the table from a prospective buyer and you know the programs and you can educate them, especially on grant programs? It's a huge buzzword right now. Yeah, and I've been doing grants for about over a decade now because there's always different grants coming and going. So you just got to be aware of them. I mean, the path to purchase right now, that's going away in a month and a half. So if you guys have those kind of buyers, you need to get them into escrow right now. I think just knowing finance and looking at a situation going, hey, well, this if you do this, 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 this will work later. And, you know, the whole thing about a CRM, going back to that, is like, I have clients I'll start with now, but they're not going to be ready till next year after tax season. So they go in that drip system and they're in there. And then in a year and a half, I have a buyer. I think a lot of times agents get stuck on this instant buyer, you know, and it's like you have to understand that you're buying a house is the biggest purchase of your life or selling a home. So you just got to understand it takes time and following up and knowing you know, the different products, I think, is really an advantage. I'm also a special. I also have I've spent a lot of my um time studying tax law and legal strategies. So I'm also work with a lot of investors. So when an investor comes to me, I'm like, is your trust set up right? Are you in separate LLCs? Do you have separate bank accounts? And they're like, what? I'm like, you're completely exposed. You know, if you pass away, did you know your family's going to pay all this money in a state where if you just go in and set yourself up correctly, you're going to be okay. So honestly, I've made myself so knowledgeable that anyone that sits down with me has not not hired me. And so how how much would you say, you know, how much time per week would you say you devote yourself to to learning? And, 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 and obviously, you probably don't need to spend as much time as you did 10 years ago. No, every day. Every day I learn something. Every day something changes, you know? I mean, look at what's going on in politics right now. There Maybe Dodd-Frank's going. Maybe the MI reduction's coming back. Maybe it's not. It's like every day changes. And it's just understanding that. Um, and I've just, I always looked at things as a financial legal strategy, as a tax strategy. And like knowing like, I mean, they always call me for advice and I'll always be like, oh, consult your CPA, but I think it's this answer. Yeah. And we're also, <laughs> I mean, I think the, the other thing that's lost on agents is as real estate professionals, we're educators. I mean, it's our responsibility to educate our buyers and our sellers. And I, I think sometimes we have to take a, you know, self inventory and ask ourselves how much information do I have up there to educate people? Yeah. I mean, I grew up in an apartment in Brooklyn 
and, you know, waitress myself through school. And when I got out of school, I was like, no more waitressing. I'm going to learn a business. And I just threw myself into education. I took tons of seminars. I took finance. I took lender seminars just to understand lending better. I took real estate. I took investments. I took tax attorney seminars. And I read, I read one book a month. That's my goal. And like, I'm just always educating myself. And like the second I stop educating myself, everything's going to change. And then I'm not going to be a great leader to my wonderful team. My team right now, you know, they're really getting it. We're spending time together every week. Like I'm teaching them the finance, the basis, and they're they're doing one. They're all brand new agents, and they're all doing wonderful. All right, this is a a common denominator that I hear among most uh, producing agents, <laughs> and 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 then I'm going to throw you a trick question, only because it's something that that I've been pondering uh, the the last week, but. You always answer your phone seven days a week. So my my trick question, and I don't know the answer to the question is, um, because like all real estate agents, when I was selling, I mean, you always answer your phones. That's what we're taught. So I'm on the phone with a prospect, but I got another one calling. What do I do? I text them while on the phone. Say, I'll call you back in a few minutes. Oh, that's really good. Texting is phenomenal. Because I got to have my little earpiece Bluetooth in, but send 30 text messages. So I'm very into text messaging. I think a lot of people are. I think a lot of my clients don't even want to talk to you half the time. It's quicker to text. Are they always private messages or do you use that, um, uh, I'm on the phone, call, I'll call you back kind of uh, pre-written They're, they're private. They're I think all, either's yeah, fine though. Yeah. I think either's really fine as long as you're just acknowledging them. So so how much business and, you know, I mean, how much of an impact has it been on your business to be the agent that answers your phone as opposed to the agent that doesn't answer their phone and calls you and you answer your phone? I hear this all the time. Well, the truth is, okay, so if someone calls me on one of my listings and I answer the phone, I'm already great to talk to. So they're already going to work, want to work with me. And then I tell them, by the way, I'm great to work with. And I answer my phone and they go, oh my God, you're right. They like these three houses, but I'm going to push for yours. And it just makes me, you know, you want to be, you want, when I work with another agent, it's like, a win. How do we make this a win-win situation? You know, it's not like we're fighting. It's like, how can we make this a win-win? You know, we're dealing with people's emotions. They're buying the biggest purchase of their life. So like I me, trust me, you know, and answering your phone. I mean, yeah, it sucks answering my phone on Sunday during NFL. I mean, what are they doing? <laughs> you <should be> watching <laughs> <the football. laughs> exactly. But I understand the weekends are busy. And if I can't take my calls, I forward my calls to someone on my team that can. So the phone's always being answered. And I think that's why the team environment's getting bigger and bigger in real estate and lending. I don't want to work with lenders that are not teams anymore because I want to know somebody's going to give me a prequel at 3 p.m. on a Sunday if I need it. Good point. Wow. Yeah. That was the gauntlet right yeah. there. Well, bam. <laughs> I'm leaving. Bye. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> she just went Lady Gaga on us and dropped the microphone. That's it. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so, all right. Um, this is my big one. Um, I, you know, this I'm, is the most important thing. This, in anyone's this success. is. So you make lead generation a big part of my yeah. week, uh, at least five days a week in daily success habits. You know, lead gen, you can substitute and, and, and use the word prospecting. I've been throwing in, in the term also data management because all of our leads, everything in our CRM is data. And whether I'm calling them, emailing them, I'm managing my data. Um, but as far as actual lead gen, um, how how important is this for you, and what's the difference? It's man. I think it's mandatory. I think if you're not lead generating at least two hours a day, you're not working. Even myself. So my goal, my goal is a little smaller than my team goals. They have to make a lot more calls than me a day. But I make five calls to my sphere of influence a week, and then I send them a handwritten note. And it's amazing how many people cannot believe they got a handwritten note from someone. It could say five words, but it's like, wow, they took the time. They care mm -hmm. about me. They think about me. And I think the reason I was, I really had to build a team the end of last year is because I got too busy. I haven't been marketing. I haven't been doing anything because I'm so busy. So now I have this team that's working with my clients and helping me. And I'm actually sending handwritten notes and doing this. And I've already like, can't believe how much business I got from it. So even like top producers need to be lead generating a minimum of two hours a day. And I actually have, um, a form called daily success habits mm -hmm. and they have to get to 61 points a day and different things create different points. So a phone call is one point an email is one point text messaging is one point an open sitting in open house is 10 points writing a contract is 10 points. So every single day before that end of the day, they need to email me their daily success habits and I want to know they're working. And what's so great about this is all of a sudden they're starting to see it work. 
you know? And then That's all brilliant. The, yeah. And I make them do it five days a week. And some of them are doing it seven because they're hungry and they get it. So I think if you're not spending two hours a day lead generating with your top producer or brand new, like you're really just not hitting your potential. Yeah, I would. Uh, my team would have an, an opt out 50 points if they bought me lunch. But if anybody <laughs> would like my daily success habit form, just send me an email. Uh, I, I want wow, it. Wow, ding like the bell. It. Yeah, ding, ding. That's, that's I, I awesome. Actually, so if anybody like wants that. that. You know, that, that it's so amazing that you talk about that because, you know, so many agents today are so excited about they get into real estate and they think that the, the people are going to walk into their living room and, you know, and, and, and they don't. And social media. Media doesn't really, although it's good, it's it's a tool and it's necessary to some degree, and and, and it offers something that it never offered before. Social media, um, that's really it's you, what, what I'm hearing you say is, don't lose the personal connection, the telephone call, the pri the special message, not a send out card, but a handout written message that takes what a few minutes to do at best, um, and and you're not spending all day doing it. You're carving out how many hours a day should a person in your perspective be uh, prospecting? Minimum two hours. Minimum day. two hours. Yeah, that's, and that's funny. I say three. Uh, yeah. And, and you, know, you, th you think about well, telemarketers. You, you know what telemarketers do for eight hours a day? Lead gen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's so well, I think, okay, so here's my other thing about open houses, okay? You guys got to think of them as virtual offices. Yeah. Go set up your laptop, sit in a vacant open house of somebody within your company if you don't have a listing and make calls. And there you're lead generating while having an open house. Mm -hmm. But here's another thing my team's been doing. When we do an open house, they have to do a minimum of 10 door knockings in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I laughed at first. I was like, there's no way this is going to work. I can't tell you the positive feedback we're getting. Hey, we're having an open house on the street. Would you like to come? Would you like to know what your house is worth? Yeah, I'd like to know what my house is worth. And now all of a sudden we have a connection. We have an address. We have a phone number. We put them on our database. So the I, my, my team has to do one weekly open house a week, but some of them do two, three because they're like, it's our virtual office. Yeah, per person, well. right? I mean, not, mm -hmm. not as a team, but per person. Per person. Yeah, and yeah. I, my team spread out through the valley. Yeah. 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 That, that, that's really awesome. You know, years ago, and it's funny because a lot of the basics haven't changed, uh, but years ago, you got a property that you're going to hold open. Uh, you would talk to the five houses, five neighbors on either side of that house and the 10 across the street. And all you do is say, hey, I'd like to invite you to a private showing I'm having at my open house about an hour before the regular people start to show up. And it sounds special and oh, it's yeah, a private good. invite, you know, and it's amazing how many people, even if they're nothing more than a looky-loo or a Debbie decorator will come over and spend that time. And what is the ultimate goal? Build You're going to get a name, a phone number, and create a relationship. But here's the thing about that that looky-loo neighbor. He might have a buddy that's going to buy a house. You never know. That's right. I'm nice to everybody. I'll take any sales price because you just don't know who they know. And the second you start discriminating, you're put, you know, shooting yourself in the foot Fact. because you don't know. Yeah. Well, one of the things, and, and going to number five, social media, um, I'm finding with a lot of these mastermind groups and, and these meetings that we're having with our top producers, they've gotten to be top producers because they've worked hard over the years and they've got their systems and they've been doing it for so long. But now they're they're raising their hand and saying, all right, what about this social media thing? They've never needed it uh, and maybe still don't need it, but they're very, very curious about social media. And, and so how have you been able to use that for marketing? It's the most phenomenal thing, I think, to ever come out. It's free marketing. Make one post a day on Facebook. I got a selfie stick. I finally, well, actually, someone mailed it to me because my videos were so shaky. <laughs> and I awesome. just video. So, I mean, I flip a lot of homes. I do a lot of investment properties, too, so I'm in a lot of remodels. So, like. You know, I follow myself around this camera and people, I hammered a wall. I made a quarter of a hole for five minutes and I got 2,000 views. <laughs> you know, it's like silly, but people are like, and then when they see me out, they're like, oh, you're funny, you know? And, and I think I've been in the business a very long, I've been in the business, let's see, going on 14 years and everyone knew I did real estate before social media, but now they know I do real estate. And everywhere I go, everyone's talking it because before they're like, oh, I knew you did real estate. But now they're like, they're seeing my before and afters, you know? I'm all I'm just like I'm promoting what I'm doing. I do a lot of investment property, so I'll break down the numbers of what a rental looks like and what the cash on cash return is. And I'll do this long post and people like it because people it is hard for people to ask questions, especially about something they don't know, where I'm just giving little snippets of stuff and it gives them, OK, this is what Lauren's doing. And I think social media is I mean, coming soon. So the rec what I've read is the number one clicked on thing. So if you have properties that are coming on the market, you need to start promoting them and hashtags. If you're not using hashtags, you're using social media incorrectly. I met a gentleman, he's a very heavy hitter out of uh, Hollywood, 
and he has Instagram and he goes all over and he views these multi-million dollar homes. And he's constantly posting. But while he's posting, he's hashtagging Saudi Arabia, hashtag Dubai. And all of a sudden, these people who are buying, want to buy in Hollywood are clicking on that and they call him and they're hiring him. He would never, ever have gotten a client from Saudi Arabia wow. in Hollywood if social media wasn't a fact. So I think social media, if you're not using social media, you're basically throwing away money. All right. Um, wow. Wow. We could talk about systems of race over time. Well, we don't because I want to talk about your team. Okay. Um, so you've got a, obviously, um, yes, I want copies of all your stuff, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> want to be on my team? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, let's talk about your team. You, you, uh, um, you're, you're looking to add agents yeah. to your team, and, and I think what you provide is something that is so desperately needed. We have so many agents that are new to real estate, uh, just don't have the mentorship, just don't have the coaching and and the systems in place. So let's talk about your team, what you're looking for, and uh, how. To, well, we got your email address, so we know how to contact you. Yeah, I've just really been trying to surround. So I think. Part of success is going back to something you said earlier, which is surrounding yourself with positive, good people. So that's my number one thing. Everyone on my team, we work well together. You know, we're, we're, we're there to help each other. What I'm looking for is agents that are hungry, that need that motivation, that want to learn more about loan products and how I think. Because I think different than other people. So as a coach, I look at things differently. Um, I'm just looking for that agent that wants to go to the next level. I'm generating leads right now. Um more than we can handle. So I need people to, I want to bring them on. I have scripts for them. I coach them. I teach them how to close leads. All my agents I've been hiring since September. I'm up to four right now. Every one of them was brand new in the business and they're all closing two to three deals consistently a month right now. So it's fun for me because I'm like, wow, this is working. I, I hear a covenant, not necessarily a responsibility, but a covenant in your voice, which is saying, listen, you know, I may have these leads, but you need to be willing to to follow my my system and if you do you will reap the benefits as have these four that have preceded you um it, so it doesn't matter if there's zero or maybe have sold a couple even um if they come to you and they're interested in being on your team um uh, they've got to be willing to learn they've got to be willing to to do what you uh you know what you what you, what you provide to them and work and, well of course of course yeah <laughs> i mean so I'm many out. agents yeah. <laughs> there's so many agents yeah. come on no, how many agents I mean. a day right. work three to four hours really right. work right you know like you have that's why the 61 the daily success habits i do the 61 points is important because it makes them sit down and do it so I am looking for some great talent. If you guys are interested, email me, um, and then I'll send you the um, ask you for a resume, and then I'll do a disc assessment on you to make sure that you're a team. You know, you'll fit well on my team. All right, really appreciate it. That was uh, that was phenomenal stuff. I'd love to have you come back and talk about systems if uh, yeah, you're definitely. willing to do that. You just need to have systems in place. That's yeah. all. Or, or, yeah, and making social media work. All right. Well, okay, social and uh, and and again, if you want copies of these slides, and 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 more importantly, um, our webinars are always posted on YouTube. So um, I would encourage you to find our YouTube channel, West USA Realty, uh, and listen to this webinar over and over, and and take notes. So I appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Lauren. Oh, thanks for having me. Hey, Bob. Now the good stuff. The good stuff. <laughs> ah, good morning. Shall I sing? Yes. Uh, you think you can get away with it? Yes, I believe I can. <laughs> and you okay. probably can. <laughs> one, one, one thing, if y'all read West Words uh, that's in your offices, uh, uh, pick up a copy and you can see Lauren right in the front page of that inside front page. There she is. Nice picture. Good you real, stuff. You, you realize they can't see that, right? I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Sorry. I realize they can't just see that. Just take his word You're, for it. You are right. <laughs> Not really. By the way, I'm going to take off and go to something I think is important. I mean, maybe the rest of you already done it already, but it's called video marketing. How to do it and get the most out of it. I'm going to go Friday for a uh, couple of hours and see if I can see just what they're doing there over in the uh, East Valley. And uh, I'll let you know how that comes out. Maybe I'll go on and sing a song on Facebook. Who knows? I'm going to live until I die. You know, something like that. <laughs> I love it when you state the obvious. That's <clears throat> awesome. 
Now, I've, I've got something that I thought was extraordinary. This is a, uh, actually, and, I, and I'm telling the story so that some of you can learn from this, and I'm, uh, even the person who did this can learn from it and, and understand better. But here's a binzer here, uh, so a new agent has this binzer and gave it to the buyer to fill out. Well, the buyer filled it out, as you can see there. Um, and then he handed it in to the listing agent. Now, this is a binzer, and it says, buyer has changed her mind about the purchase of home. So then I get, <laughs> I get the call from uh, one of the agents and says, well, they're telling me that uh, probably going to lose our earnest money on this. Yes. Well, yes, uh, yes that other agent is going to be right on that. Uh, you shouldn't have sent that over there. And I need to teach you how to take care of that and do it the proper way. You need to talk about the house. You, you can bail out of the house, yes, but you need to have a reason. The reason is I don't like the house. It's sitting on the wrong direction or whatever. There's something about the house, but don't say you changed your mind because that's a breach of contract. And I said, how much uh, is this house? And uh, it was 150000 uh, small house. I said, how much earnest money do you have here? Well, I got $2,000. Well, they don't really need to lose $2,000. That's, that's terrible. I'm uh, sorry to see that. But yes, they will lose the uh, $2,000. And and um, I don't know. I have to check it out a little more. And I checked it out a little more last night. Actually, this person says, no, I think I'm going to come back in and buy the house. So now we got it rolling the other way. They were just unsure at first. So put some paperwork together here and get it rolling and buy the house. But be very careful what you're doing. In other words, go to the classes at West USA and learn how to do this. Benzer is really important, so don't mess it up. Then we had two people this past week, experienced agents, and there's a bunch of them out there. There's a bunch of things, because I get this call all the time. I said, well, why don't you just represent, uh, they've got a listing, and now they got a buyer, and they're asking me some questions. I said, well, why don't you just represent the seller only? Well, because I have a buyer. I got to represent the buyer. No, you don't. You don't have to represent the buyer. You can write the contract. You don't have to have special representation for the buyer. You can do the whole thing, make it go. It's okay. Well, I didn't know you could do that. Now, these are old time experienced agents that should know better. And so when you represent both of them, well, now you're asking double trouble there, maybe. But always remember that uh, that you can represent the seller only. And this one guy came in and said, listen, I'm a buyer. I want to buy this house, and I want to reduce the price by 3% because I'm going to represent myself. And how do you handle that? Well, you, <laughs> various ways. You do want to sell a house, get an offer written up, and see how it flies. But uh, that's what some of them are thinking as they're coming in. Then another couple here, uh, one guy got the inspection report and sent it over to our agent. And she says, oh, I, I don't know what they want here. Of course you don't. The inspection report doesn't say what you should have done. It's just a bunch of gobbledygook. It says you ought to have more inspections is what it really says. Am I right? Yeah. More inspections. Don't send stuff over like that. And so the other, I had both agents here. The agent called me up and said, well, what they say? it's pretty clear what they want. I said, put it in writing, type it out, do it the right way and send it in there so that you're not sending an inspection report and see if they will uh, uh, fix these things for you. So I, that was another problem that we had the other day. Um, Here's a fellow called me. He wrote a contract on 13117. And it got accepted on 21 
17. New contract. It's, it's the, there was no new contract available when he wrote it. He wrote it, and it's in escrow as of 2 one Whoa, wait a minute. OB says cancel that. OB, other broker. Okay. Yeah. Other broker says cancel it and use a new contract. And then the agent called me up and said, I'm not going to cancel this. Do I, do I have to do that? No, I, the broker didn't buy it. <laughs> the broker's not a principal here. You have a buyer and a seller. They agreed on this contract, and now we're going to fly with it. And don't, <laughs> I knew that that was going to come up. I knew it, and it did. And there, there's my remark right there. It says, hell no. Uh, <laughs> So <laughs> that was a strange one to come through, too. Um, hey, okay, let's get back over here. Dual agency is the issue. If anybody ever wants to read this, this is uh, history, I guess. It come out in about 1982 or something. That's when dual agency come forth. I, I always wonder why. So many years ago, we were telling buyers uh, that we represent them or in intimating that we do. We don't. We're representing the seller at that time. And that flew for a long time. And I tried to get dual agency uh, stuck in uh, way back in 1980. And my broker said, no, 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 no. We're going to just do real real estate here, you know, and I Oh, this is going to come to be one of these days, and it did about 1985, and there's a, a lawsuit here for the Edina Realty way back in 1986 when it all flew, and they wound up uh, ponying up $630 million to some of the sellers. Uh, it was very interesting. So be very careful of this stuff, and uh, don't be afraid of it. Call me. Let me help you with it. Um, the other thing, uh, oh yes, you asked this question, Michael, I believe it says, uh, what does it say? It says something here. We have an agent who posted the following. Do we have a form? Yes. Yeah. The question was. I forgot the question, but I did send you the email. Oh, this radio show has gone off the cliff quick. Wait, I'm here. I'll help. <laughs> Does uh, anybody know if there's a form that we need to use for clients who waive their inspection? That's right. Yes. Or that don't want to have an inspection done? Well, there's nothing in the contract says you got to have an inspection done. It's not a contractual item. You can, but you waive it. We have something called the A106 form. It pretty much covers it. And uh, it, it talks about inspections. We tell you to yeah, and I think have the an reason, inspection. The reason for the question was that, you know, as, as an agent, I want there to be acknowledgement from the buyer that I've done everything that I can to encourage them and advise them to get a, a, ho a home inspection. And if they choose not to, I just want to, as an agent, make sure there's something documented that I've that I've told you okay. as the buyer. And you, uh, what about a termite inspection? Should they get one of those? Or is that part of a home inspection? There's a lot of things they need to do. And if you give them that buyer's advisory, that tells them, oh, my goodness, so many things they need to do. It's a perfect uh, unit for you. But the A106, uh, oh, I wrote this thing up 20 years ago. I really did. There it is. And it, it pretty much covers everything. And as time goes by, we have to amend one thing or two on this thing. So we did amend it. And for those of you that are wondering, the original form that Bob has his, in his hands was etched in stone. So that form has been around <laughs> a while. Tablet. Oh, yes. Etched in stone. It sure was. Well, it should have been. But it uh, it actually came upon a uh, – there was a lawsuit many years ago that everything in the contract is boilerplate. And none of it means anything. It's true. If you go to court with it, they'll say, oh, well, who who reads that stuff? Right. So if you have a separate sheet of paper, and when I read about that lawsuit, separate sheet of paper where they acknowledge, boom, 
then we got you. Yeah, and then they also the other thing, and Bob, I appreciate it. Lauren, I appreciate it. Todd, I appreciate it. But there's also a place, my understanding, on the binzer where the buyer acknowledges that they're electing not to do an inspection. So you Correct. can always uh, go Labor that route. Inspection. As always, like us on uh, your office Facebook page. Uh, each office has its own page. Uh, it's the way we disseminate the information, get all the announcements and all the important information to you. And I'll leave you with a quote from the great Pele. Pele. Success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you are going, what you are doing or learning to do. And to quote the great Pele, go! Have a great day. Go out and sell a home. <laughs>